Okay, Assalamu alaikum everyone. Uh, welcome to lecture 21 for natural language processing. Um, so today we will continue with our discussion on uh, recurrent neural networks. Uh, last time we were discussing uh, some issues that arise during recurrent neural networks, specifically uh, the issue of overfitting and some ways of handling that. Uh, we will start from that aspect again today. And uh, then we'll move on to a, another type of recurrent neural network, uh, which is called a sequence to sequence model. And uh, these models have a number of applications and one of the applications that we are going to look into is machine translation. Uh, so, so the idea is that this week will be the last week of new content for this course. Next week I would not be introducing any new content and I plan to uh, end this course uh, this week where we will be discussing sequence to sequence models and machine translation. Next week uh, we can have uh, lectures if you like uh, for revision and uh, for other stuff as required. Uh, but we will not be adding new content next week. <clears throat> Uh, so your exam would be most likely uh, given to you by May 12, 13. Uh, so you'll have about a couple of days to uh, do the exam and submit it back. So the exact format I'm still kind of debating. Most likely you'll have to submit a scanned copy of some uh, solutions. And there might be a component that is done on LMS, uh, but I'm not sure right now. Uh, I'll decide later. Okay, any questions? Sir, uh, do you have an, uh, a format of exam in mind? Like uh, it would be numerical based or conceptual? Can you repeat the question? Sir, I was asking if you have any format for the exam in mind uh, at this time. Like, uh, would it be mostly numerical based or conceptual based? Um, I'm still think of, thinking over it, actually. Uh, so, for example, my regular exams, like I used to take before uh, uh, this new situation, uh, those involve some short questions or some long questions. So what I was thinking was the long questions usually were uh, something that you had to do and write. So those could be submitted, uh, submitted, uh, using scans, you write it on paper and you scan it and then you submit it. And then I'll have some short questions like the ones that you saw in the quiz yeah, uh, last time. And those can be done on LMS. So that's the general idea. Uh, it will become concrete maybe by early next week. Okay, sir. Thank you. Any other question? So in the last lecture, we were discussing overfitting, uh, which is a general problem that arises in machine learning uh, algorithms. And we also discussed a couple of techniques that can be applied or used for handling overfitting in uh, neural networks. Uh, 
uh, one was called regularization which was modif modifying the objective function modifying the loss function by adding a term that is based on the parameters and the idea was to reduce the absolute uh, values of the parameters and in, uh, under regularization there are two general techniques that are done we use the l1 norm of the parameters or we use the l2 norm of the parameters so both of these add uh, a positive value with a parameter which is regularization parameter to the loss function so if you have a loss function the loss would then be a function of the error over the training data set so this is a function of the data and the parameters of the model plus there is another parameter which is the parameter of regularization which is usually lambda and then we have a regularization function which is a function of the parameter this r can either be l1 or l2 and the idea is to minimize this uh, loss function during the optimization process so remember uh, the f is usually cross entropy for uh, classification problems in neural networks but in addition to that we add another term as i said called r and then we minimize both of these and the minimization process follows in the same way uh, meaning that you apply stochastic state uh, stochastic gradient descent uh, and propagate it back through the neural network to update the parameters so one thing that i want to highlight here and okay let me mention the other one as well the other approach that is more specific to neural network is the dropout approach okay dropout may uh, you basically uh, kind of drop links at various steps in the process in the training process so when you drop a link essentially that link is not participating uh, in learning the input output mapping and as a result the other links other weights take the share of the learning but this dropping is done randomly so as a result the overall model becomes more robust so isme uh, jo parameter hota hai which is the dropout rate parameter so this is basically a percentage of uh, uh, links that you will drop in a particular batch of your training process so this brings me to the training process which i wanted to uh, discuss uh, next or i was alluding to last time so so we had discussed input output data as x y i where i is equal to 1 to n so this is our training data or you can say the overall data overall theek okay. hai so this is the entire set of labeled data that we have available for uh, learning the model so what we do typically is we partition this into three we have a training set we have a testing set and we also have a validation slash development set dev set okay and uh, the usual breakdown for these is 70% goes to training so of the total n examples 70% would go to or would be held for training uh, about 20% would be held for test and 10% would be held for uh, validation or development okay okay now uh, coming back to our parameters so there are some model parameters
so which in the case of neural networks were these matrices w w u for example in a gru then you also had p a you also had b y and so on so these are called model parameters these are the parameters that we would like to learn from data but in addition to these there there are other parameters as well so these in general are called hyper parameters so these are parameters of parameters in a way okay uh so isme ab example kya ho sakte hain ab upar ek jo humne overfitting ki baat ki thi so from there you can find examples of hyper parameters for example lambda is a hyper parameter dropout rate is a hyper parameter this is also a parameter that you will have to fix or set in the learning process but these are parameters that kind of uh control your overall learning process so in addition to this there could be parameters parameters of the optimization algo so for example if you are using the simple stochastic gradient descent we have a parameter which is the learning rate called alpha but if your uh, optimization algorithm is slightly more sophisticated you might have some other parameters as well like for example the momentum rate uh there could be others as well and of course how fast you decay these uh, momentum as well as the learning rate parameter so these all of these parameters are then called hyper parameters theek okay? hai is this clear yes sir sir number of hidden layers uh, does this also uh, result in uh, one of hyper parameter uh, which one number of hidden layers that we want to have yes so if that is something that you want to change as well so that is also a hyper parameter so anything beyond the parameters of a given network model the w's and the b's are hyper parameters so i can also add the number of layers for example i can also add number of units per layer i can also add for example a uh, activation function for example should you use a tangent hyperbolic or should you use a rectified linear unit so that could also be a hyper parameter uh and uh, you can even include different different architectures eg gru lstm as hyper parameters so the list of hyper parameters is fairly large actually uh theek hai okay so now uh, coming back to how do we fix or learn this parameter both the original parameter as well as the hyper parameter so here i am going to basically uh go over the learning process so basically uh so at start all parameter are either random or suitable initial selections okay. 
so uh, so then basically you train over the training data and then uh, test over the dev set or validation set so this is usually done after each epoch uh, again now these terms are slightly different so let me uh, so the entire training data set training set is an epoch theek okay? hai the entire training set is one epoch so if we pass through the entire training data set through the network of course for training purposes we said that we have completed one epoch of learning of or of training but usually this epoch is often done in batches so in other words the entire training data set may be be divided into let's say 10 batches each batch is processed as a whole theek okay? hai so in other words uh you process the entire batch as one block of data and you compute the and the error that or the loss for the entire batch rather than for one example at a time so these are techniques for kind of making your uh, learning process more efficient you basically process the whole batch as once and one of the reasons to do this is you can apply uh, matrix operations and get the results uh, for the entire batch rather than getting results of one example at a time and of course you can speed up these matrix operations using gpus as well so you get a loss for the entire batch which might consist of multiple examples and then and during this entire batch all the parameters are fixed the model parameters as well as the hyper parameters so once you get a loss after this entire set of batch this loss is then updated meaning that the parameters are updated using whatever optimization technique you are using like stochastic gradient descent so once the parameters are updated after you have processed one batch then we process the next batch after processing the next batch you then move on to the next batch until you have gone through the entire data set training data set so after you have gone through the entire training data set you have completed one epoch of training so usually uh, usually uh, we plot loss after each epoch so in other words you can have a graph of number of epochs versus uh, loss you can plot this so this is going to be a curve where the loss is decreasing over time or number of operation number of epochs okay so and within each epoch as i said we process that in examples in batches and we only update the parameters after each batch theek okay? hai so let me maybe so so you have epochs here and you have loss here and the curve is generally monotonically decreasing okay 
but this is the loss over the training data. Remember we were using the training data to learn uh, the model. So this is a loss over the training data. But after each epoch, we also compute the loss of the model or the error of the model on the development set or the validation set. So that will give you another curve. Tony curve, I'm going to draw it again. So let's say the first curve was the training and the other one was the validation. Okay. So usually validation error is slightly larger than the training error because that's unseen data. So what we do is since this is an unseen data, we tune our hyperparameters on this validation set. Okay. So hum multiple the farm model run karenge or har dafa hum model ke jo hyper parameters hyper parameters kya hai wo jo humne piche list kiye the number of layers bhi ho sakte hain but for example dropout rate ho sakta hai learning rate ho sakta hai lambda ho sakta hai to hum har dafa wo fix karenge aur phir ye plot curve karenge aap plot draw karenge training error ka training loss ka aur validation loss ka jis set of parameters se validation loss sabse thoda aata hai wo hum phir fix karenge once we have fixed that validation loss, then we will train on the training data set again. Okay. So as you can imagine, uh, you have to do this, you have to run or train the model multiple times, especially if you have hyperparameters. So let's Sir, ये जो hyper parameters की selection या updation है, वो hidden trial method के through ही की जाती है। हाँ, more or less वो भी मैं बताने लगा। So basically, so let me say we have only two parameters: dropout rate and let's say learning. Two parameters. So assume dropout rate, of course, as you see, is a percentage. So this percentage, let's say 0 to 1. I will talk about it in a fraction. And the learning rate will also be, of course, some range. Let's say learning rate of range will be 0 to 5. So what we typically do is we do a grid search. Meaning that we divide each interval into grids. So, for example, uh, we can divide the interval into ten uh, intervals. So, for example, आपके पास zero एक zero of course is means that there is no uh, dropout. Then you have point one. Then you have point two. And then you have 0.3 and so on. Of course, 100% dropout is also not recommended. Usually, I have just said earlier that 20-30% is not enough. But anyway, I am giving giving an example here. So let's say, whatever interval you have made, you have divided in 10. In the same way, you have divided in 10. So that was my 0 to 5. Uh, and then you have 1 to 3. उसको फिर हम जैसे कि टेन में कितने बनेंगे टू आर पॉइंट फाइव का बनेगा सो जीरो जीरो पॉइंट फाइव ठीक है वन पॉइंट जीरो वन पॉइंट फाइव सो ग्रिड सेट बेसिकली मेंज़ डेट कि ये जो आपके पास टेन बाय टेन कॉम्बिनेशंस हैं विच इस हंड्रेड यू चेक ऑल ऑफ़ देम ठीक है सो इन अदर वर्ड्स वील हैव ट� uh, the model 100 times and then select the best combination. In this case, best combination for two hyperparameters. So once you have fixed 
that best combination, let's say that best combination was 0.1 for one and the other, let's say, was 2.5. Then you go ahead and train your train again using these hyperparameters. Okay. So after you have trained using these hyperparameters, then you will get your optimal values for W and so on. Okay, any questions? So if I want to repeat, the process is we process batches of examples. That's a training data set have kepa. Um ek batch pura process karenge at once, which may which may have hundreds or thousands of examples. Us sare batch ka a cumulative loss hoga. Wo cumulative loss per hum parameters may adjust karenge. Okay. In other words, we are adopting the model parameters. So we will do this batch by batch until we have completed one epoch. So one epoch ke paad koi aapke paas adaptations ho gai hain aur us uske baad bhi humne ek loss nikal liya for the entire data set. ठीक है? So for the entire data set ye ek loss aa gaya. Ab is loss ko fir maine validation ke upar chalaya aur wahan bhi ek loss nikal liya. ठीक है? इस मॉडल को मैंने वैलिडेशन पे चलाया वहां भी एक लॉस निकाल लिया अब ये मैंने एक सेट ऑफ हाइपर पैरामीटर्स के लिए कर रहा हूं आई विल डू इट फॉर हंड्रेड सच हंड्रेड सच केसेस एंड फाइंड द बेस्ट सच हाइपर पैरामीटर्स Okay, any questions? So is this point clearer, the learning process? Of course, when you have learned the entire uh, model, in other words, you have fixed the hyperparameter as well as the parameter, you then test or generate results on the test set. And that is the results that you report to others. Uh, sir. Uh, sir, if our validation set is different, we don't have to be different in our training set. We don't have to be random examples in our training set. We don't have to be different in our training set. We don't have to be different in our training set. We don't have to be different in our training set. जो हमने ट्रेनिंग में यूज किया हुआ उसी में से ही कुछ सबसेट वैलिडेशन के लिए यूज कर लें यस सर क्योंकि अगर कुछ एग्जांपल वैलिडेशन से में भी हम रख लें और जब पैरामीटर हाइपर पैरामीटर ट्यून हो जाएं उसके बाद हम वही ट्रेनिंग के लिए भी यूज कर लें कि उसका अलग होना जरूरी है आ, नहीं दो चीजें हैं एक तो ये है कि जब आप हाइपर पैरामीटर्स की वैल्यूज ढूंढ रहे हैं उसमें तो जो वैलिडेशन सेट है या जो डेव सेट है वो सेपरेट होना चाहिए आइडियली फ्रॉम प्योर स्टैटिस्टिकल परस्पेक्टिव सेपरेट होना चाहिए फ्रॉम द ट्रेनिंग सेट ठीक है सो यू कैन नॉट टेक द सेम एग्जांपल्स दैट यू हैव यूज्ड फॉर ट्रेनिंग फॉर वैलिडेशन एज वेल सो दैट्स वन थिंग द सेकेंड थिंग इज जब आपने हाइपर पैरामीटर फिक्स कर लिए आपने डिसाइड कर लिए कि ये मेरे हाइपर पैरामीटर्स होंगे उसके बाद आप बेशक ट्रेनिंग और वैलिडेशन को इकट्ठा कर लें और फिर लर्न करें विद दैट सेम सेट ऑफ हाइपर पैरामीटर्स अब ये आपके पास जो पैरामीटर्स आएंगे जो मॉडल पैरामीटर्स आएंगे वो आपके फाइनल मॉडल पैरामीटर्स होंगे और हाइपर पैरामीटर ऑफ कोर्स आपने पहले ही फिक्स किए हुए ओके सर ठीक है
Okay. Uh, I think that is essentially it. Uh, overfitting ke liye, uh, as I mentioned last time, you need a lot of data if you want to avoid overfitting. In the, in the domain of uh, neural networks, as the models are very complex, very expressive, we typically need a lot of data to avoid overfitting. So one of the new techniques or you can say approaches to investigate uh, to avoid overfitting is data augmentation. Given whatever uh, problem that you're dealing with, look, look into ways in which you can generate additional data easily. Okay. So, uh, of course, this is domain dependent, dependent on the problem, but for different problems, you might have easy ways of generating additional data. For example, for many image uh, processing applications, you can simply generate additional data by taking simple uh, transformations on the images. For example, you have a face detection problem. So maybe you have 10 logon ke 10 different poses ki pictures hain. Okay, so that means that you have about 100 examples. One way to add additional example is ke wo, wo jo images hain, wo aap unko thoda bata change karke examples mein dal dein. For example, aap usko thoda sa face ko dada turn kar dein and add it to the example. Face mein colors thoda se change kar dein and add it to the example. Background for see change kar dein, add it to the example, and so on. Aap kuch looking karke, you can multiply the examples that you have for your data set. In NLP, uh, NLP may, matlab, uh, there are other ways of doing this. Uh, to, I don't want to go into details, but uh, okay, maybe I can give you one example regarding paraphrase detection. So paraphrase detection uh, is a binary classification problem where we are trying to determine whether two sentences, let's say sentence one and sentence two are paraphrase or not, or not, okay? Which means that uh, and our, of course, training data set would be of this type. You will have pairs, S1 and S2, and you will have a label like one, which means that this is a paraphrase, and you have a label zero, which means that it's not a paraphrase. So one very simple way, relatively simple way, as well as crude way to generate more data is, for example, neural network may have may ordered data, so you can actually uh, change the order as well. S1 is also one, for example. Okay? So reflexivity is always true. So if one is a paraphrase of two, so two is also a paraphrase of one. Okay? So this can be additional pair add in training data. Mein. Okay? Also, you might want to consider if uh, so, for example, if S1, S1 and S2 are paraphrase, as well as S1 and S3 are paraphrase, then you can actually infer S2 and S3 are paraphrase. Okay? S1 and S3 are paraphrase. S1 and S2 are paraphrase means that S2 and S3 are also paraphrases. So this basically applying the relation of transitivity. Okay. So is aap kuch techniques laga sakte hain again dependent on your specific problem. 
to generate additional data. And these additional data are meant to make your model more robust and less prone to overfitting. Okay, so any questions? Okay, so if you remember when we started talking about sequence modeling, we talked about a specific uh, scenario in which the input length and the output length are different. So X was input, Y was output, and we denoted the length of the input sequence as TX, and we denoted the length of the output as TY, and if Tx is not equal to Ty, then you have a kind of issue on where to get the outputs. Output kis tarah aap generate karenge. Pahle to ye hota tha jab Tx or Ty same hote the, har ek time step pe ek output aari hoti thi. For example, name identity recognition mein, ya POS tagging mein, ya in the extreme case, last time step pe output aari hoti thi, which was the case for sentiment classification, for example. Theek hai? So, but what happens if you have uh, these sequences of different length? So, which may examples come What are the typical examples in which these sequences might be of different length? Applications come si ho The most uh, common example application is machine translation. So you have an input X in one language and you have an output Y in another language and uh, there is no guarantee that X and Y would be of the same length. Y could be smaller or larger than X. Okay. So in addition to that, you have many other applications in general, wherever you have language generation, wherever you have language generation, you typically run into this problem. And other examples, for example, could be, for example, the paraphrase, paraphrase, Paraphrase example di thi, wo detection ki di thi. but maybe you can generate paraphrase as well. So given one paraphrase, I want to generate, or given a sentence, I want to generate a paraphrase for it. Okay. And for example, in chatbots also, you want to generate a response, which is again a language generation problem. Akipas input uh be osakta text or sakta ya kuch questions or sakta and based on that you want to generate an output which is a sentence. Uh, summarization is also somewhat similar to this. Let's say you have a long document which is again a sequence of words X. You want to generate a summary Y. In in this particular case, Y generally would be of shorter length than X. Okay. So there are actually numerous applications in which the length of X and Y would be different. So the typical ap application as I said is machine translation. So in such scenarios, it is more beneficial to use a modified architecture, which is called in, uh, in the NLP literature as well as machine literature as called sequence to sequence models, sec to sec models, okay, sequence to sequence models. So in other words, you actually have two sequence uh, models uh, in serial. So the first sequence is often called an encoder. And the second is often called a decoder. So both of them could be any networks. 
So the first one could be, for example, RNN, and the second one, for example, could be GRU, and vice versa, or any other combination. Okay. So let's take an example and see how it works. So we were talking about machine translation. Okay. So machine translation may, uh, for example, uh, Urdu to English. I am talking about. I, of course, this is Roman Urdu. I, ah, khana, kha, raha, hum. Okay. So this is Urdu. This is X. Let's say, and I want to translate this into English. So I'm eating food. Okay. So obviously, as you can see, the number of tokens in the two is slightly different. And in general, they would be different for any two particular translations. So both of them are, of course, sequences, right? So what we do is uh, we basically encode the first sentence x. X is basically encoded through a recurrent neural network. So this is your encoder. So this is like a standard recurrent neural network or any other recurrent neural network that you you like, like a GRU or LSTM or any other deep network for that matter. Deep network may all layers be also be. Okay. So this is the encoder. Now encoder ka jo output hogi. Now this would read all the words. So I am eating. So I am eating. This is uh, five words, right? So I will process all of these five words. And at the end of the day, I'll get A5. A5. Okay, na? The network jo output hota hai, uh, after the fifth input have been given is A5. You remember that? Ye time hai, five. So after I've read whom, which is the last word, the neural network will be output its activation A5. Okay, activation up further process B through a fixed network, uh, through a standard network to further, uh, let's say, reduce in dimensions. But let's say I won't do that and leave this to be the my final encoding. So this would A5 would then be my encoding for this entire sentence because it has seen the entire sequence of words. I am eating. And encodes all of that information in this vector A. Okay. Now, this output I have is our standard first neural network, which we called an encoder. Now, next step, this is your encoder neural network, which we call a decoder. And this could also be an RNN or any other deep. Uh, extension of an RNN. So this network would now start with A5 as input. Okay. Remember, when we have standard, when we have the current network, recurrent neural network, when we start, we have A0, lete te, which was all zeros. But now this network would start with A5, because this is the encoding of the sentence मैं खाना खा रहा हूँ। इसकी इनपुट हमने दी है। अब बाकी सारा प्रोसेस सेम चलेगा, ठीक है? X zero of course शुरू में all zeros ही होंगे इसके, and then we generate my y's, ठीक है? So this is my second network which is now going to generate y at each step, like we did for let's say POS tagging or we did for language modeling. And it will stop of course when we output a end of sentence token as a token uh, 
during the prediction. Okay, so is this somewhat clear? Let me draw a rough diagram for this. So is this clear? So basically, if I if I may draw this uh, somewhat roughly, so ये आपके पास एक पहला मॉड्यूल है और फिर ये फिर दूसरा मॉड्यूल है मैं थोड़ा सा इसको अजीब सी शेप से दिखा रहा हूँ जस्ट टू इंश्योर कि ये बीच में ये दोनों मिलते हैं तो पीछे वाला जो था ये इंकोडर है और इधर वाला ये आपका डिकोडर है both of them are in general rnn here we are dealing with sequence models so that's why they are called sequence to sequence models theek hai jo pehla jo decoder hai left side pe yahan humne pura sentence input kar lena hai jab pura sentence complete ho jayega jo uska output hai wo fir decoder ko ja raha hai wo decoder fir wahi step by step fir chal ke output generate karega और सर ये सुपरवाइज ट्रेनिंग सेटअप ही है ना जी सुपरवाइज भी सो फार वी हैव नॉट डिस्कस्ड एनी अनसुपरवाइज आर्किटेक्चर इन द न्यूरल नेटवर्क सो ऑल ऑफ दिस इज सुपरवाइज सो सुपरवाइज इन मोस्टली इन द एनएलपी आर डोमेन एज यू कैन सी द मशीन ट्रांसलेशन की हम बात कर रहे हैं आपके एरर्स तो डिकोडर्स के एंड पे आएंगे ठीक है ना एनकोडर में तो कोई एरर नहीं है Of course, encoder के भी कुछ parameters तो हैं, because वो भी एक neural network है, उसमें भी W A है, उसमें W U है, उसमें भी B Y है, B B Y तो खैर शायद ना हो, depending on how you build it, B A तो होगा, उसमें भी parameters हैं, encoder में भी parameters हैं, decoder में भी है, but आपके जो errors जो generate हो रहे हैं, वो decoder में हो रहे हैं, वो errors हम पूरे पे decoder से through pass करके encoder तक जाएंगे, so in a way this becomes a deep network. पहले तो पूरा आपने एंकोडर का नेटवर्क के पास करना है बैक प्रोपेगेट करना है फिर वो जो एरर्स आएंगे जो ए को मिलेंगे जो फर्स्ट टाइम अनरोल्ड डिकोडर का होगा वो फिर वापस एंकोडर के में जाएगा ठीक है ठीक है सर जी सर तो इसको इस तरह के मॉडल्स को हम ऑफन टाइम्स एक टर्मिनोलॉजी भी यूज होती है नेटवर्क में एंड टू एंड भी कहते हैं इफ यू हैव मल्टीपल लेयर्स दैट आर कंट्रीब्यूट मल्टीपल मॉडल्स दैट आर समवट इंडिपेंडेंट दैट आर कंट्रीब्यूटिंग टू द एंटायर लर्निंग प्रोसेस तो हम कहते हैं वी आर डूइंग एंड टू एंड लर्निंग मतलब एक एंड से लेके दूसरे एंड तक हम लर्निंग करवा रहे हैं ओके ओके सो आफ्टर वी हैव इनपुटेड इनपुट द एंटायर सीक्वेंस ए आई मीन ऑफ इन द इनपुट सीक्वेंस वी गेट ए फाइव ए फाइव इज देन इनपुट एज द फर्स्ट इनपुट ऑफ द डिकोडर और डिकोडर फिर उसी तरह ही फिर हम चलाएंगे डिकोडर जब फर्स्ट इनपुट आएगा फर्स्ट आउट ए जो होगा वो ए इसका जो होगा ए जीरो वो ए फाइव होगा प्रीवियस का तो ए जीरो उसमें दिया एक्स जीरो दिया तो ये मुझे वाई जनरेट करेगा अब ये वाई ऑफ कोर्स हमारा पहला आ, उसका होना चाहिए ट्रांसलेटेड वर्ड होना चाहिए एंड देन ऑफ कोर्स वंस वी आर फिक्स दिस देन वी गो टू द नेक्स्ट टाइम स्टेप जिसमें प्रीवियस वाई जो था वो फिर हमारा इनपुट होगा और प्रीवियस ए जो होगा हमारा इनपुट होगा वी गेट वाई टू एंड वी गेट वाई थ्री एंड सो ऑन So until of course we reach a maximum length, or until we get an end of sentence token, we will stop there. So actually, this model seems uh, quite interesting, but the even better interesting aspect of this is it works actually. If you are if you give Sufficiently large number of pairs of x and y, 
you are able to train a sequence to sequence model quite accurately. Okay. And these are some of the state of the art machine translation models that are used nowadays. So most of the state of the art machine translation models are variations of sequence to sequence model. So you enter a sequence which is uh, the original sen language sentence and then you output the new language sentence in the decoder. So such models can also be used for image captioning. So in image captioning, what do we have? We have an image as input and caption as output. So image of course is not a sequence but the general encoder decoder framework, it, will, it may not be sequence to sequence model, but it's an encoder decoder framework. Okay, encoder, sec decoder architecture. So the encoder could be, for example, is convolutional neural network. And of course, the decoder can be some form of recurrent neural network because output is of course a sequence. Okay, uh, you can end-to-end training kar sakte hain, uh, where you train the CNN based on the errors that are generated at the end, but sometimes you can do separate training. Bhi kar sakte hain. Separate training kyun kar sakte hain? because uh, for those who have taken computer vision, uh, pre-trained models computer vision ke bahut available. Hain. So you can simply uh, pass your image through a pre-trained models and get a encoding for it from once you have gotten the encoding for the image that then becomes the input to the decoder and the decoder is then of course trained from the training data the encoder is not trained so in this case, this would not be end to end. So any questions? So encoder ke jo for example english language per trained ho for machine translation no apna question fir repeat kare pehla wala part miss ho gaya tha sir uh, question nahi hai just comment hai ki i think ki hame encoder ke bhi trained models mil jayenge jo text ke liye machine translation ke liye for example english language ji sir so for example, sentence embeddings are mil jati hai. So pre-trained model mil jati hai. For example, BERT bhi ek pre-trained model hai. Uh, ya glove aap use kar sakte hai. So you can use that. But usme of course, the disadvantage ye hai ke then you are not updating uh, your pre-trained model on the specific task at hand. In this particular case, let's say specific task machine translation tha. Or maybe wo jo encoding unhone jo learn ki hui hai, wo generic learn ki hui hai, not specifically for machine translation. So ek tarika jo ho sakta hai, jo humne upar pehle uh, embeddings ke liye bhi padha tha, you can start with the pre-trained model, but then you adapt it using the specific uh, application that you are uh, running it on. Okay, now you can start with embedding, just a word to web embedding to start, but wo embedding to adaptable. So, you can do this in the beginning of the pre-trained model use so that you get initially better or quick convergence, and you can do it in end-to-end -end training hi uski. so that you get quick convergence and adaptation. Okay, 
ओके सर ठीक है ना सो दैट इज पॉसिबल सो वन ऑफ द आई थिंक एक जो इंटरेस्टिंग चीज जो मुझे अच्छी लगती है नो नेटवर्क्स की इज दैट इट फोर्सेस यू टू थिंक वेरी ब्रॉडली एंड लूजली मतलब आप बहुत कुछ कर सकते हैं नो नेटवर्क्स के साथ बिकॉज वी नो हैव अ फ्रेमवर्क व्हिच इन अ वे काइंड ऑफ चीजों को आपने जोड़ना है and that's it and you can try it out so i think that is one of in my perspective the biggest advantage of neural network nowadays ki aap beshmar architectures bana sakte hain try out kar sakte hain see how they work and uh, unki performance gauge kar sakte hain to previously jab hum traditional machine learning padhte the we were just limited to logistic regression ya svm ya probabilistic model to wo एक बस फ्रेमवर्क होता था एंड वी वर जस्ट लिमिटेड टू दैट वाइल इफ यू लुक एट न्यू नेटवर्क एज वी स्टडीड इट सो फार दे आर एसेंशियली टर्स ऑफ लॉजिस्टिक रिग्रेशन मॉडल दैट आर रन इन पैलरल दैट आर रन इन सीरियल एंड सो ऑन जिस तरह मर्जी आप उसको कंबाइन करें और उसमें फिर अडाप्टिबिलिटी आप फिक्स कर सकते हैं अडाप्टिबिलिटी आप प्री ट्रेन डाल सकते हैं दे आर मैनी ऑप्शन ओके सो सीक्वेंस टू सीक्वेंस की जो एंड टू एंड ट्रेनिंग है वी आर नॉट गोइंग टू डिस्कस दैट ऑफ कोर्स वो भी वही बैक प्रोपगेशन की ही वेरिएशन है बट नाउ दैट वेरिएशन पासिस थ्रू यू कैन से ए बाउंड्री बिटवीन टू स्लाइटली डिफरेंट मॉडल्स वन इज एन कोडर एज ए साइड एंड द अदर इज ए डिकोडर ठीक है तो बट जनरल तरीका उसका वही ही है बैक प्रोपोजिशन ही है एंड ऑफ कोर्स इट्स बेस्ड ऑन ग्रेडियंट्स सो नाउ लेट्स सी टाइम क्या हुआ थर्टी हो रहा है अच्छा ओके अनदर एग्जांपल इज बेसिकली स्पीच स्पीच रिकॉग्निशन स्पीच रिकग्निशन में इनपुट आपके पास स्पीच है एंड स्पीच ऑफ कोर्स इज यू कैन से इज अ सीक्वेंस इन टर्म्स ऑफ सिग्नल्स ठीक है एंड आउटपुट इज टेक्स्ट सीक्वेंस ठीक है सो यहां ऑफ कोर्स अगेन जैसे इमेज कैप्शनिंग की मैंने बात की थी वहां हमने सीवी की कोई टेक्निक शुरू में अप्लाई की थी इनकोडर्स के लिए इस केस में आप कोई सिग्नल प्रोसेसिंग की बेस्ट मॉडल अप्लाई करेंगे फॉर द इनकोडर डिकोडर आपका ऑफ कोर्स कोई रिकरेंट मॉडल ही होगा जैसे जी आर यू है एल एस टी एम या सम वेरिएशन ऑफ दैट एंड हेयर अगेन यू कैन डू एंड टू एंड ट्रेनिंग इफ यू लाइक और इफ यू हैव वेरी गुड प्री ट्रेंड इनकोडर यू कैन गो हैड विद डैट एंड देन जस्ट ट्रेन द डिकोडर Okay, so next we are going to discuss uh, machine translation and how it's going to be evaluated. So um, I'm kind of inclining that maybe a next time I cover it because this is more or less my last main topic. Uh, okay, I might also discuss attention models. Okay, uh, but I think that can be covered in the next lecture. So any questions? सर ये इनकोडर डिकोडर की एंड्रयू एनजी की वीडियोस अवेलेबल है आपकी आवाज बीच में कहीं आई तो शुरू में गायब हो जाती है बीच में गायब हो जाती है जी कैसे बोले जी सर मैं पूछ रहा था कि एंड्रयू एनजी की वीडियोस अवेलेबल है ये जो इनकोडर डिकोडर के पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू से आपने अवेलेबल है मैंने एक्चुअली आज ही सुबह अपलोड कर दी है आपकी वही रिसोर्सेज में तो ये अवेलेबल है तो दो आर आई थिंक वेरी गुड इन द सेंस के इंटिव और कंसेप्चुअल चीजें वो अच्छी तरह कवर कर लेता है मैथ ऑफकोर्स इतना कवर नहीं भी हो सकता इस कोर्स में एन एल पी के कोर्स में नहीं हो सकता मैथ उसने भी नहीं किया हुआ बट दे आर गुड इंटिव वीडियोज मैं भी मोर एलेस उन्हीं को ही फॉलो कर रहा हूँ विद लिटिल बिट फेयर एंड देयर ठीक है तो वो अपलोड कर दी हुई मैंने
uh, one aspect in evaluating language models is beam search jo isne andrew engine ne is videos mein discuss ki but beam search maine pehle bhi discuss pehle discuss kar liya hua aapke sath i don't know if you guys remember logistic regression hum jab padh rahe the to beam search humne discuss kiya tha anyone remembers so anyway i might uh, quickly go over it again but andrew andrew ke video mein bhi usne acha explain kiya hua hai so you can look into that as well uske beam search ki video bhi hai apply to machine translation humne apply kiya tha ye uh, us pe language modeling ke liye okay any other question comments so okay uh, there is going to be a quiz towards the end of this week or early next week so wo quiz usi tarah hi hoga jaisa last time tha on lms uh, so essentially your last quiz to this weekend tak aapko available ho jayega all right any other question quest suggestions or feedback uh sir wo जमील पे असाइनमेंट टू की टैब में सिंग है ठीक है तो जमील पे एक्चुअली थोड़े से ज्यादा काम भी करने हैं वहाँ मैंने वो ग्रेडिंग इंस्ट्रूमेंट की वेटेज भी चेंज करनी है तो इनशाला आज या कल मैं कर दूंगा आ, हमने हमारी चार असाइनमेंट्स है ना जी सर वन और टू के मार्क्स अपलोड हो गए वन और थ्री के सर टू की टैब में सिंग है और फोर्थ असाइनमेंट अपलोड हो गई है जब थ्री की अवेलेबल है टू की किस तरह मिसिंग उसमें मे भी शायद आपका मैं वो डालना भूल गया हूँ सर मेरे पास शो नहीं हो रही अच्छा ठीक है चले वो मैं देख लूंगा आज या कल तक मैं देखता हूँ उसमें फिर बाकी चीजें भी मैंने चेंज करनी है वो वेटेज वगैरह ठीक है सर एनीथिंग एल्स Okay, I think I will then stop here. So we'll meet you again, inshallah, on Thursday. Okay.